Hanna. He's a retired Lebanese army general and he joins me live from Beirut. Uh, general, great to have you here with us. How does the recent wave of strikes from Iran towards Israel signify a potential shift in the dynamics of the conflict in the Middle East? Uh, Jafar, first, it's uh, the first uh, drone warfare swarming, though it's like uh, low-tech uh, Shahid 136, but it's the first one used for such long distance, more than 1,500 uh, 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 kilometers. So uh, it's something new, never seen before. It's like a symmetrical approach. So this one by itself will change the dynamics, you know. So um, Iran really has proven that uh, it is uh, it has this capability as far as the ballistics missile are the concerned, as well as, you know, the proxies and then the, the, the drone. Moreover, this one, it's the first encounter, uh, a violent encounter between Israel and uh, Iran. It's from the shadow war into the direct conflict. So it's going to create a lot of things. It's a paradigm shift. It's like uh, uh, changing the dynamics of the region, the geopolitical uh, balance of power, what's going to happen after. So everybody in this region is thinking because Iran is sending messages all over the world in many directions to the near abroad, to the regional, especially in the Gulf area, in the regional, and, you know, uh, to Israel as well as to the American. So what's going to happen? How they are going to retaliate? So now the message is clear. So what would be the re retaliation? This... Uh, attack really violated the main concepts, the strategic concepts of Israel. So, but the fear now, uh, Jafar, maybe what's gonna happen uh, soon, that uh, uh, it, the fear is that one will eclipse, you know, what's going on in Gaza as a genocide. So what uh, Netanyahu would do, you know what I mean? And how he's going to retaliate. Uh, against the proxies, against the Iranians. So I think that there is a lot of constraints today. Uh, first, uh, you know, the message from Lloyd Austin to you, Av Gallant, that if you want to really ret retaliate, you have to tell us before. So we go to the French saying that, qui donne or don. So the United States of America is giving a lot of, you know, uh, weapon to Israel. So they have to ask her first because they are depending now uh, on their security, national security, on the UK, who interfered, you know, the drones, uh, 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 plus the United States of America. So uh, this is the issue. Uh, General, what strategic implications do you foresee for Iran's decision to directly target uh, Israeli soil, considering the historical, historical context uh, of the region? Uh, I mean, the, the Iranian now, they are more confident you know, they see some weaknesses in the, the stance of the United States of America, as well as what's going on in Israel, internally, politically, and then socially, and then economically. And seeing in, in, in uh, the, 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 the Israeli army that after, you know, more than six months against a non-state actor, well prepared for a symmetrical warfare, for guerrilla warfare, is not really able to go for a decisive victory, which really violates the trident of the strategic concept that was put by uh, uh, David Ben-Gurion, that Israel has to have uh, a major ally. So they have the United States of America. The second one is to deterrence. It's better to deter instead of going to war. If you want to go to war, you have to uh, uh, fight your war on the uh, uh, enemy's territory. Second, uh, your war has to be decisive. And then, last but not least, the uh, early warning. All of these concepts and these pillars are really uh, violated now, and they have to recreate themselves as an army first, then as a strategic uh, concept. And then the tools for this strategic concept, how they are going to fight asymmetrically against uh, what we call the unity of arenas between Iran uh, from, from uh, uh, Yemen to Syria to Lebanon and to Iraq. So how they are going to fight really 
and being able to uh, uh, measure their success and victory at what time. So, you know what I mean? So, what's going to happen, for instance, if uh, uh, Iran goes nuclear, you know, so with the deterrent? So now we go into what we call the uh, uh, um, relativity of power. So you might have power, but you cannot really use it. You have 100 nuclear weapon, tactical, operational, and strategic, but you cannot use it against. You cannot use it against uh, Iran. So it's a deterrent with none uh, sense, with none, you know, uh, political or geopolitical uh, effect. Uh, moreover, now, the deterrence of Israel today is more negative by denial. You know, you deter your enemy by a negative uh, defensive by denial, but re by really uh, downing the, 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 the missiles and, you know, the drones outside the Israeli territory. But this is goes against the uh, offense defense uh, for, for uh, strategic counsel for Israel. Why? Because Israel considers that uh, defense is a temporary moment preparing for the offense. Offense against whom? I mean, against non-state actor. In 2006, you have failed to really terminate Hezbollah. And now, even in, uh, in Gaza, six, uh, 360 kilometers with some, you know, non-state, uh, uh, you know, non-state actor with a local uh, uh, industry of weapon and so on and so on, you are not really able. So this greater image will change the dynamics in the region, uh, Jafar. General, in what ways do you believe the international community, particularly the United States, should respond to Iran's assertion of self-defense in uh, launching these attacks? Uh, Jafar, you have no firefighter, you know what I mean? So who is going to interfere and being able to talk to Iran and then talk to Israel? Even Biden was not able to really influence the decision of Netanyahu and go and kill, uh, assassinate this general, uh, Mohammed uh, Rida Zaidi. Moreover, the United States of America has no link. They don't have, like, diplomatic relationship with Iran, how they are going to talk to Iran, you know what I mean? So, uh, even though the international organization, the United Nations Security Council, is powerless in this kind of major shift in the world, I mean, the, the world, the world order is unraveling. So, you cannot really go to anything. So, maybe geopolitics is, you know, at the, 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 the top primary primacy of geopolitics in the world today. Nobody is talking about economic. Everybody is talking about war and conflict. So I think that uh, uh, more sanctions, I mean, more sanctions for Iran, more innovation from Iran as far as the weapons are concerned. Uh, more sanctions, uh, Iran has a way uh, to Russia, as a way to China. So maybe you are seeing the unraveling of the, the, the whole world order, you know? So maybe now the United States of America is not really willing or will let Israel to go into something to reestablish its deterrence. However, this goes against the, you know, the thinking, the strategic culture of, of Israel. And uh, how do you assess the effectiveness of uh, Israeli defense uh, measures in response to Iranian strikes? Uh, for example, the spokesperson of the Israeli military said that 99% of the projectiles coming from Iran and other countries like uh, Yemen and Iraq were intercepted. This is what I've called uh, uh, Shafar. This is the uh, 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 negative deterrence, negative defensive. So it goes against the military doctrine, strategic military doctrine of Israel. So you may deny. So now we have like 200, uh, uh, 200 uh, 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 drones uh, and plus ballistic, uh, ballistic missiles. So imagine the, the worst case scenario for Israel that you have the same amount from Iran, from Yemen from Syria, from Iraq, and from Lebanon. Would Israel be able to really uh, uh, down all of these uh, weapons? So it's like uh, 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 Iran is creating what we call the strategic parity, but not as a high tech, maybe as a low tech, via uh, having and, you know, making a lot of missiles and uh, arming their proxies by missiles and drones. So they are trying to create uh, a deterrent by strategic parity, uh, conventional against non-conventional uh, uh, balance of power. General Ilyas Hana, thanks very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time.